Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescaserates.com with another case of 2022 Topps Gold Label Baseball. This is Figure Team 2. All card ship, brand new release, just dropped today. And some uh, potential for some really nice stuff in here. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. If you've got a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won that spot in that team random. James, you ended up with Last Spot Mojo with the Mets. There's everybody right there. Thanks everyone. Got. Rex is saying you're reading a uh, season review on the trader is projecting to be at a Cubs are projecting to be at around 76 and a half wins, but saying they could get a wild card. With how poor the NL Central is. So are they suggesting they're gonna beat up on the rest of the NL Central and end up with a wild card? Is that what they're saying? Hey, Charles, no worries. You know, we like helping helping the community when, when we can. Good luck, everyone. And all card ships. So if I happen to miss like a numbered card or something else, or a, I don't think there's variation. In anything, but if I have, if I happen to miss something, don't worry. It'll go. It'll get to you. All right. The frame is behind a Carlos Correa. And the gold frame auto is is Hunter Green. Nice rookie auto, Hunter Green. Nice. That's for Shane and the Red Legs. Ron of Cincinnati. Is everyone counting out the Brewers? Yeah, I don't know what to make of that NL Central. That that is going to be a pretty bad division, but I don't know about the wild card. If unless they're suggesting that the Cubs are going to win the division, but a poor NL Central isn't going to help the Cubs. Unless they're saying they're going to beat up on the other teams and get more than 76 and a half wins. Because the wild card isn't dependent on the division, it depends on all the other non-first place division teams and a lot of teams have improved. So I don't, I don't see how they would get... That's gonna be, it's gonna be a difficult challenge. I mean, last year's wild cards. Last year's wild cards won 101 games, 89 games, 87 games. Plus the division winners. Right, Mets and Phillies were wild card teams at 101 and 87 wins, and then in the West, the 89 win Padres won the wild card there.
What's up, Gilo? There's Roberto Clemente to 50. Brewers won 86 games last year. But that's their, they, they lost Josh Hader, right? I don't know what they did. I don't know what they have on their team nowadays. I don't know if they made a lot of moves. All right. Behind Jose Altuve is is a Diamondbacks autograph. That's Jake McCarthy, and it's numbered 34 out of 50. James with the Diamondbacks. That's with the spot that he won in the team random. All right, next box. Yeah, Gilo, the cards do, do look a little more detailed this year. I'm liking the, the sort of standing and then action shot kind of photos they're using. Someone said if you look at the design, it looks like a, the bottom of Van's shoes, the shoe print. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> the, yeah, it kind of does. I wanna, it's kind of hard to see the different class numbers, yeah, though. Really tiny this That's year. super tiny this year. Usually they have it kind of like in the background, printed across there, which I which I kind of liked, but it's a little bit more difficult to see. But here's a Gavin Sheets to 99. Maybe a change for next year. Oh, is gold label done? Yeah, they're canceling it. Oh, gold label's canceled, ladies and gentlemen. So get your gold label while supplies last. What other products did they cancel? Here's Luis Robert to 99. And a Tom Seaver, five out of five. Game use memorabilia. And that's going to be for the Mets. That's for James and the Mets. Last spot mojo strikes again. And all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. And looks like we got a Cubs autograph. It is. It's Alfonso Rivas, 18 out of 75. Rookie auto for the Cubs. That's Rob. Yeah, there was a list of, I think, I think when when Nick and his dad went to the uh, Topps conference, I'm sure there's a list out there somewhere, but they had announced what products they were they were adding and what products they're canceling for, for next year. Usually they, they do they they usually shuffle around some products they'll add some stuff and take out some stuff. Uh, but Beckett has an article here that says Tops is putting a handful of baseball lines on the shelf on the shelf in 2023 during a presentation at their industry conference in Arizona today. They announced the following brands are not part of their release calendar at least as standalone products. Archive snapshots. I don't remember that. Bowman Chrome X. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Clearly authentic. Yeah, I always thought clearly authentic was a little redundant because of uh, because they have uh, what call it? Archive signature series are the are like a very similar kind of product. Uh, Tops Fire 
is gone. Gallery is gone. I don't think we did much fire god. Those might have been retail only. Gold label, opening day, and first edition. Which is also a little redundant now. Which makes sense. Yeah, you know what? Why aren't they bringing... Why well, did you bring Supreme back, Rex? I agree. I feel like they could bring it back as a sort of high end high endish release I would love to see Supreme come back That's the one for, although there's Jose Abreu although there are products that share design elements with with Supreme I would like to see Tech come back if they trim that checklist and not make the parallels too complex if they simplify that high tech baseball that could be a fun one to do as well there's TJ Friedel, rookie auto for the Reds, Shane, and the Red Legs. All right, another four. I guess we knew that Tom Brady is going to be in Bowman draft picks. Bowman draft. Apparently LeBron's kid, Bronny, will be in Topps Chrome McDonald's All-American Basketball. It looks like uh, for Star Wars, Oscar Isaac, who played Poe Dameron, is going to be in there. Mark Hamill's returning, too, for the first time in over five years. Samuel L. Jackson back in, uh, in Star Wars products. So it should make some of the 2023 Star Wars stuff some fresh chases there. Chris Bryant for the Rockies to 75. That's for Kevin and the Rocks. All right, Jaron Duran Duran and another Hunter Green. It's for Shane and the Reds. He's heating up. He's on fire. All right, another box. Can you grade frame cards? I think so. I don't know. Although I may think maybe for obvious reasons it's not as common. Check eBay. See if anybody's grading these. Or last year's. Or any frame. Here's a Wander Franco for the Rays, Devin. Oh, there you go. Mike says, yeah, I've seen a number of graded transcendent framed cards. All right. There's Reed Detmers and Reed Detmers reveals and Andre Jackson, rookie autograph for the Dodgers. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. 
There you go, David with the Dodgers. Nice. Could be a part of the Dodgers' plans this year. All right, next. Gavin Sheets to 99. There's Aaron Judge. And here is a Reed Detmers. Rookie auto for the Angels. It's for Rob. I'll be, honest, I'll be honest with you, Rob. I saw the Angels logo, and I kind of saw, a, you know, the way a pitcher would hold his glove. I thought it was going to be someone else. A certain pitcher for the Angels that we would love to see. Yeah, I thought so, too. Gabe, Gabe's like, hey. Old label's great because of the frame auto for the price point. I suppose that, I suppose that gold frames will, now where, where can you find gold frames outside of this and Transcendent? What other products? I guess Museum Collection has frames, right? It'll just be less common now. <laughs> I've got an Edward Cabrera to seventy five. And a Jose Ramirez for Cleveland, that's to 50. That'll be for Jason K. Oh, Gilded. That's right, yeah, but that's, it's like limited, right? All right, and Rob has the Marlins. Here's Mookie Betts. And here is Jackson Coar, rookie auto for the Royals. That's gonna be for Rick and the Royals. All right, we are halfway through the 16 box break.
All right, another box. We've got Ronald Acuna Jr. to 50. Another uh, Wander Franco. I think that's the, the black parallel right there. There's Yachty and a oh, Brandon Marsh, Angels Edition, Rookie Auto for uh, Rick. No, sorry, check that. Rob. And the Halos. Oh, uh, is, Var is Miguel Vargas getting the start opening day? I think so. Pretty sure he'll be, he'll be in the opening day lineup. Starting second base, probably. The surprise rookie this year. I think that's one of the big, uh, sort of the big decisions, James on James Altman. I mean, I feel like, I feel like there's gonna be some service time manipulation with James Altman. Because it sounds like you know they might they might give like guys like Trace Thompson and David Peralta and Jason Hayward and maybe even JD Martinez some opportunities that so so it seems like James Altman might be might be sort of odd man out Luis Gill going to Tristan and there's also might just be some service time stuff they want to fiddle around with. So he might start the season in Triple A. And there's Jake Berger, rookie auto for the White Sox, Stephen Carney with Chicago. As for surprising rookie, here, here are the non-surprising rookies in the NL. Just by looking at the 2023 NL Rookie of the Year odds. It looks like uh, Corbin Carroll is the favorite. Then Jordan Walker, then Miguel Vargas, then Kodai Senya, Ezekiel Tovar is 10 to 1. I mean, just by looking at this list, you know, maybe those top few guys you expect to have some pretty solid seasons, but who's going to be the surprise rookie? I don't know. Could it be Ellie De La Cruz for the Reds? I know he's highly touted, but could this be a season where he hits the ground running? Brett Beatty, maybe. Michael Bush for the Dodgers. Bobby Miller, who's going to get some opportunities because of... A couple injuries in the Dodgers rotation. Garrett Mitchell. Jared Schuster. Those are some names that are out there on the NL side. Marco Luciano. Robert Hassel for the Nationals. James Altman is plus, uh, plus 8,000. We got... Maybe Zach Veen for the Rockies, perhaps. K. 
Kevin Alcantara, Pete Crow Armstrong, though I don't think he's going to be a surprise, right? People are expecting him to do well. Annie Pajas, Henry Davis, if he gets some time. In the, in the AL, your favorite is Gunnar Henderson for the Orioles, then Masataka Yoshida, Anthony Volpe, Grayson Rodriguez, Tristan Costas, Hunter Brown, Josh Young, Royce Lewis. Oscar Colas is on that list right there, Rex. He is plus 2,000, 20 to 1 to win AL Rookie of the Year, at least for now. I mean, any of those guys have a nice season. That'll, that would be nice. There's Pete Alonso to 75. Yeah, I'm not sure what James Outman's options are. I think he's sort of an older rookie. I think he's marinated in the uh, the minors for a little bit. Here is TJ Friedel. Steven, uh, Shane, sorry, Shane with the reds on this one. So I think that's why he still has like some of that that rookie eligibility on Outman. Some other guys, some other names that jump out at me on the AL Rookie of the Year odds list. Bo Naylor, I think Guardians maybe. D.L. Hall. Zach Nito for the Angels. Kyle Manzardo. Marcelo Meyer, Emerson Hancock. Is Jason Dominguez going to get called up? He's 80 to 1, maybe he's not. Some of those guys start to creep up. And yeah, I, I suppose th those players are expected to do well. But I guess in terms of surprises, like who's going to be the one that does have the breakout season and just hits the ground running? I feel like Juan Soto kind of came out of nowhere, right? All right, Tristan with the Julio Rodriguez. All right, and your autograph behind Pete Alonso is Aaron Ashby. Rookie auto for Eric and the Brew Crew. No, I think O'Neill Cruz used all his rookie eligibility last year. I think he played enough games. All right, final four boxes. Good luck, everybody. Franco, Spencer Torkelson. Tristan gets all those torques. Another Wander Franco for Victor. It's Ken Griffey Jr. to 150 for Seattle. That will be Tristan.
All right, and your autograph behind Jose Siri is is Dave Stewart. Old Oakland A, Dave Stewart. That's for Eric M and the A's. Real tough guy from back in the day. I, I want to say that he he became a, uh, a baseball player agent after his playing days. All right. Three boxes left. Three frames left. Good luck, everyone. I want to see a piece of gold. Like a gold nugget or something like that. Andre Jackson to 75. Max Scherzer to 50. to find some parallels of Julio Rodriguez. That's going to go to Seattle. I'm sure Tristan would too. Yes, yeah, Seattle. There's a Ken Griffey Jr. And an Oriole, Ryan Mountcastle, 2 out of 25. Might be the lowest number of frame we've seen thus far. Small sample size, this is only pick your team two. But this is for David M and the Orioles. Joe Ryan to 25, Bobby Witt Jr. Ken Griffey Jr. to 150. Alex Bregman to 75. A lot of numbered cards in here. All right, Bregman goes to Ed P. and the Astros. Tristan with the Mariners gets the Ken Griffey Jr. to 150. Rick gets the Bobby Witt Jr. rookie card. And Joe Ryan for the Twins. That'll be for Jason K. That's the 25. Behind Brian De La Cruz is a Diamondback. Stuart Fairchild, rookie auto. For James in Arizona.
All right, final box, ladies and gentlemen. Devin Booker has 11 points in the quarter. Cool that guy down. All right, final box. Good luck, everybody. There's a Bobby Wood Jr. numbered. 33 out of 75. Rick Thomas. Another Bobby Wood Jr. And our final gold frame autograph, autograph number 16, is going to be Cleveland. This is for you. Jason K with the Cleveland Guardians. There you go, boys and girls. Pick your team two in the books. Quick little recap here. Thanks everyone for watching, for breaking with us. We got more in the store. Still looking for, we got a train whistle here, but still looking for a gold frame train whistle. So let's, let's keep hunting for it. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com and I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.